you got to be a bold man of God to get your ass on stage and make the announcement of your wife's past like this. I'm going to have you stand up, and I'm going to make an announcement. And um, after the announcement, I'm going to ask that you, um, you leave church quietly and, and don't talk about the announcement here in the building, please, if you can. So y'all can stand to your feet. Um, before I make the announcement, I also want to say that... Um, my request to you is that you will continue to come to church and serve and give um, for the next, you know, little bit. Cause I don't want to have, I'm taking a little bit of a break, and I don't want to have to worry about the church. My break may be a few days, a few weeks, I don't know. Um, I got a call late last night. My wife has passed away. And yeah, and it was uh, it was self-induced, and it was uh, up in North Carolina. Y'all pray for me and my kids and everybody. And uh, she was, she wasn't, y'all knew that she wasn't well mentally. And then uh, she needed her medicine that was hard to get to Verse 24 says, Then two female bears came out of the woods and tore to pieces the 42 boys. Now, I got some people I would love to see torn to pieces by some bears, okay? I have some, I have some enemies. I'd like to buy them a ticket to the zoo and just pray and see what happens, you know, when they get by. The, anybody got any? No, am I the only one that has an enemy in my life? Jeez. Pastor Miller, you got big nerve. Girl, did y'all hear him when he said, yeah, y'all know she had mental health problems. Mr. Miller, the people say you steady putting emphasis on your wife's mental health, and they feel like that show is trying to bury the lead. Her friends can't believe she's gone, and they want answers. But her husband tells me she had a long struggle with mental illness. Now, it was said that this lovely first lady met her husband for, at the age of 14 or 15, and at that time, he was married with five kids. They say he started grooming her and then married her once she came of age. He constantly brings up her mental state, but he never mentions what pushed her over the edge mentally. Many people believe it's because of the contents in her diary. These were the things that drove her insane. So today my heart's a little heavy. Um, I've had a lot of women that have reached out to me about um, situations of abuse. And I just want to tell you what a lot of people have told me uh, lately and reminded me because I think I forgot. I knew, but I for. I pushed it in the back of my head um, just because of my situation. Um, Jesus took it all for you. So you don't have to stay in a abusive relationship, whether that's um, sexual, whether that's uh, somebody forcing you to take illegal drugs or alcohol abuse or physical abuse. Uh, psychological abuse, making you think that this is all your fault or you're a bad mom. God hates divorce, but why? According to everybody I've asked and the, the scriptures that I've found, it's because it hurts people. But does abuse hurt people? How do you think God feels about that? Girl, the people say she kept a diary of the nasty stuff he used to have her doing and would sometimes ride around in their car and stop and pick up transients like homeless people, homeless men, and have the homeless men relieve themselves on her in front of him, girl. And that when she finally broke free, he would stay on the phone with her for hours and hours. We spent every night together for hours just talking and talking.